water's the lifeblood of, of growing crops and water productivity is incredibly important in terms of maximising not only the yield of your crops but also ensuring that you're applying the right amount of water at the right time. It's also important that we apply the right amount of water to mitigate any of the effects um, from runoff or nutrient runoff from farms. And it also provides healthier crops that are less, I guess, prone to pest and diseases. Any irrigation system in most situations will work, but what's suited to one farm next door won't be suitable to your farms. It's critically important to get a design of that system, which is typically a computer-aided design by a professional, and that would typically be less than 5% of the overall capital cost of an irrigation system. It's also important to go and get two or three quotes. So there's different categories of irrigation. So we have surface irrigation, which includes furrow or flood irrigation. Typically on the coast, we use what's called pressurised systems. So there's a variety from solid set to drip the irrigation. It's influenced by a number of factors. So what are my soil types? How quickly can that soil type accept the water? And the infiltration characteristics of the soil are particularly important. It's also about, firstly, what's the water availability that I have and, and what's the quality like? It's really important that farmers look at their water budgets and see what will I need or what will that crop need that that irrigation system can apply that water in the middle of January to meet peak water demand. The system needs to be designed appropriately. It's about applying the right amount of water at the right time when the crop needs it. It's really important to not only look at the capital costs but the operating costs over time. Some systems have a higher labour requirement than others but that needs to be offset with the physical attributes or layout of your farm. What might work on a, a slightly slopey vegetable farm won't be pertinent to a very flat vegetable farm. So there's all those physical characteristics that you need to talk about. Ask the supplier to commission the system and give you a report on whether that's operating at the correct pressures, at the correct flow rates, and once the job is completed, to actually ask them to come back and, and test that it is running as per the design or what was quoted that would be delivered. Typically, irrigation systems uh, have a lifespan of 10 to 15 years and they will decline over time. They do need maintenance as well. It's a really good idea to actually do some health checks for your irrigation system. One is to have a pressure gauge on your pump and measuring the pressure at the highest point and even cleaning or purging the irrigation lines is a good practical thing to do to get rid of any blockages. Part of irrigation is making sure that irrigation water is going on that crop as uniformly as possible. There's a myriad of soil moisture tools that are on the market that are automated um, that you can send to an iPhone or that you can get in live time the results of how much water is available in the soil. There's also methods that can measure how hard the plant's working to extract the moisture from the soil and that can typically be just walking through the crop as most growers do throughout the day. We talked to a lot of growers and irrigators about what was most important. It can often be, oh, what pump do I need? Or I, I need a bigger sized pump. It's very much about 80% crop agronomy and 20% is about the tools that could produce more yield, more marketable yield with less water applied. I guess pulling those two components, soils and irrigation system performance together 
and tweaking it to say, how can I schedule my irrigations more efficiently and effectively? Um, I'd certainly encourage all growers to reach out to local land services and we're happy to help make some suggestions and give some advice.